And finally, to put an end to this series and quest, here's how to do the final boss of Library, the Scourge of Oblivion. This boss can only be accessed after doing the 4 mini bosses once, which in case you still haven't done, then you should check out my guides for these bosses. And when you have access, the boss is located in the Ice Library. The room with the teleport can be risky to access, as it has in blobs and ice library monsters, so ideally you want a high level to go down the stairs from the side with levitate and then open the door and aim wallet. That way the rest of the players can just levitate down straight to the wall and then just move down once. Doing it this way is the safest for everybody and you just gotta stack the aim walls until everybody's down. Just be careful when coming down, you want to move down one square at a time as there is three holy dot squares right by the door and if you just run through it you could die. Once you leave the boss, you either magic wall the three squares outside of the door and levitate up, or somebody leaves first and walls the door. Now let's talk about the boss, the Scourge of Oblivion. It can be fought with up to 10 people and the time limit I believe is 22 minutes, which is a very odd number, so I'm not sure if the actual time is decided on how long you take on the mini bosses. I just know for a fact that I have been kicked out of the boss once at the 22 minute mark. But anyways, the fight itself consists of beating 4 different rooms with bosses on them. But first of all, you will be at the main rune and summons will constantly appear. You will need to clear around 4 waves of monsters in order to unlock the first boss, and then an orange text will pop in the south of the screen saying that a room has been breached. Head to the northeast room and you will find the first mini boss, the spell stealer. The mechanic of this boss is that on the corners of the room there will be a red and a green vortex. Once the boss changes colors, you need to move it to the vortex that matches the color. After he steps on it, he will go back to the whitish form and it can be attacked. When doing this, it's very important that you move the boss off the vortex and have somebody stand on it. If the boss changes colors and steps on the wrong vortex, it will heal for half its HP. So don't step off the vortex until the boss is gone, unless it turns into the same color again. When moving the boss from side to side, make sure to use avalanches to get rid of the summons. And when damaging the boss, make sure to surround it, so that mages can easily wave it. That's all for this mini boss. Once it dies, go back to the main room and start clearing the summons again. However, now you need somebody to go into the southeast room by themselves. The room will be empty until the wave of summons have been cleared outside. This person needs to stand in the middle of the room and when the boss spawns, then bring it to the northwest corner. This can be done by one of the knights or in case you only have one EK, then one RP should do this. The reason for this is that when you are inside the rooms, you stop the summons from spawning all together. This is very helpful as they will spawn over time instead and a knight needs to be grabbing these fire elementals and keep them away from the shooters. The damage from them is not the issue, rather is that if they are on the way of the shooters and get killed, they explode doing a lot of damage in AoE, so these must be kept alive to avoid issues. The boss doesn't have a mechanic to watch out for, just attack it and kill it while making sure to not kill any of the fire elementals. Once you're done, head out to the middle and now you will need two people to go to the southwest room. Just like before, all you need to do is stand in the middle of the room to stop the summons from spawning. But this time, when the waves are clear on the outside, two bosses will spawn in this room. That's why by having two people, each of them can take a boss and bring it to the opposite corners. These bosses get healed a lot by ice, and that includes their own attacks and summons. That's why they must be separated. And just like the room before, ice trolls will spawn and an EK must be around the middle to get the aggro of them. These ones can be killed by the EK and it's recommended to do it. As for the bosses, just split your party in half and it will be fine. Once you're done, head out to the middle room and send one person to the northwest room. When the boss that looks like a Jalehari spawns, move it to this square by the northwest and surround it with four players. In this room, the golems will continue to spawn and what you need to do besides attacking the boss is keep the books of secrets alive. There will be four of those and they can be healed with UHS or mass rest. However, every time you heal a book, it will heal the boss too, so do not overheal them, use enough to keep them on green HP and only heal them when they get attacked. If a book dies, then the boss will take less damage and it will be almost impossible to finish the boss on time. Also be aware that the damage from the golems can get pretty high, and I have seen 4 golems headshot mages, so depending on your level you might not want to have more than 2 on you. Finish the boss and head out to the middle room. Now the final boss will spawn after a few waves of summons. When he appears, the EK must bring it to the west side and with the help of somebody else, trap it on the corner by the teleport. What you need to be aware of is the color form the boss takes. 
When he's yellow, it can be attacked with the sticks for around 10 seconds. Then he changes colors to red or blue. When he's red, any damage he receives will be multiplied and reflected to the aggressor. When he's blue, it won't take any sort of damage and instead will hit harder himself. And during his blue form, every time on his third attack turn, he will shoot 4 beams to the north, west, east and south of him. This beam does around 14k death damage, so as the main EK blocking the boss, you need to stack up on death protection and it's recommended to use SSA after the second attack, as long as you're on point with this, then you shouldn't die. As for the shooters, if the boss is trapped and the EK is alive, you won't get hit by the beam, as it is a straight line. However, it can change to blue form at the start, when he's still not trapped, and when this happens, make sure to be on mana shield and use SSA. But if possible, just do not be on a direct line from him at all times. If the main EK messes up the timing on the SSA and still has a good amount of death protection and a decent level, he can take the damage. But without protection, he will get headshot and then the secondary EK needs to take its place. That's the entire fight pretty much. Be aware that the summons continue to spawn even when the final boss is up and the shooters must kill the summons with avalanches or spells during the off turns when the boss is on blue or red form. Just remember that during the red form he reflects damage, so if you hit it with UE then you could easily die if you are on HP. The damage from the summons is not too high, but it gets troublesome if there is a lot of them, so it's important to clear the waves and position your paladins or higher level mages to the sides so they take most of the damage. This boss draws in average more than 400k on normal drops and has a chance of two rare drops, the Calamity, which varies in price depending on the servers and is used for decoration, and the library ticket which is valued at around 80kk. This item is used to tame the flying book found in various places of the secret library. With that said, that's all I got for this guide and series. If you found it helpful, consider subscribing to the channel or supporting directly with Tivia coin donations to Goody Donation. Thank you for watching and I hope you check out some of my other videos. Until next time.